Hey everyone, Doug here from 2 Plus Stuff, and welcome to another Upon the Forge. This is my uh, weekly to bi-weekly video where I kind of go through the stuff that I've been working on uh, for those folks who can't catch live streams. And so I'm going to jump right in and say that um, basically there's not a lot of progress this last week because of that video I put out regarding uh, Kappa, Necromunda, and all kind of stuff. Like, I took a week off basically to... Um, download all my content onto a backup drive that I have and then put it in audio form. So a big part of this week's progress is actually in the link down below. You'll see a link over to my Podbean uh, podcast feed. It should be on everything I think except Spotify and I'm working on that one. Uh, so you will be able to get uh, all of the lore videos that I have done. Uh, well, I say all, most of them, the ones with good audio quality since I got this fun little mic here, uh, will be available to you Monday through Friday coming out uh, on that line. So go ahead and subscribe down there and we'll move into the stuff that I got painted. The big achievement for this week, if you haven't been watching, is that I have jumped into Necromunda with both feet. There's a local group running a campaign. It was supposed to start last week, but they had to delay it because the, uh, the arbiter or like the guy who's acting like a DM got super sick. That's all right, because it gave me a chance to paint everything. And so here is my gang. This is Escher. If you're not familiar with the Necromunda gangs, these are uh, basically riot girls who are all about toxins and speed, whereas most of the factions are about brute strength or weapons and that kind of stuff. She's all about uh, using poisons to win the day. So we'll go through the list here. I took a bunch of pictures of them. But I wanted to stick with the general theme of the army. And that means like the studio scheme where it's a kind of a bright yellow. And so it was a fun thing to try out. Uh, I primed them all with uh, Wraithbone, uh, which is the first time I've used the contrast Wraithbone base. And I have to say I do like it more than Grey Seer because it's a much warmer tone when you put on stuff specifically like flesh tones, of which a lot of their bodies are exposed, the faces, the midriff, that kind of stuff. So uh, we'll start going through the pictures here of all of them individually. Starting off with Thrillith. She's rocking a gas tank, which you can see there. Did some cool chipping effects on the metal uh, on the back side of the tank. Next up is Rava, who is the, uh, the leader. Initially, I tried to make her look like Tina Turner from Beyond Thunderdome, the Mad Max movie. But the thing is, is that uh, you can see on her back, she has this like khaki colored coat. And so the the bleached, washed out bleached look for the Tina Turner hair, it looked too similar to that coat to look interesting. So then I went back and made it green. Uh, next up is Talia, who's rocking my plasma pistol. Nadine with a shotgun, who has uh, acid rounds. Basically, it's like acid buckshot, uh, which is like super effective in the game and also just sounds so cool. Once someone explained to me that that existed, I was like, oh, that needs to be a model. I'm like, oh, but it's really expensive points wise. It's hard to get them to you. It's like, I don't care. I don't care. I need acid with shotgun rounds in my life. And then I'm going to kind of speed through the rest because they're, you know, kind of groups of like nobodies. So we have Bella and Trixie here. Just uh, rocking some last guns. They are chumps meant to die and kind of offer suppressive fire as well as Boom Boom and Tika are my last two. And that's uh, Tika is a juve, so she can advance and get better. She's going to be my melee person to do finishing moves, basically. But everybody else is all about shooting. Now, in addition to that, I do also have four kind of models that are not painted yet. And the reason for this is when I got into Necromunda, uh, I, I grabbed the escher gang box and it kind of gives you the instructions on how to build the the gang that came in the old two-player starter set or i guess it's still available uh the underhive set and it has like a very specific like build out for them all and it's it's basically to give you a wide range of weapons surprisingly the shotgun was never used which is really weird uh so i built the original box exactly as it told me to just to do demo games and that kind of stuff and i grabbed a second one for whenever i wanted to do more custom stuff and so it turns out after my demo game, I walked in, uh, walked through the game with the guy who instructed me on it, and I found out there's just some units that I don't really want, like some weapon options. I'm like, eh, I don't really care for this, uh, that kind of stuff. And so I, with my second box, made two of the gangers that we saw earlier, and that gave me my full roster for 1,000 points is what's painted. And the other four are the ones from the starter box that I'm not using. They might get painted at some point. Uh, certainly the girl with rocking two pistols just sounds awesome. Uh, but I don't have any like specific plans to do that at this moment. One thing I am going to be working on, however, is this. This is the 
Cult of the Primal Cut. It is the Corpse Grinder Cult from the new Dark Uprising set. If you don't know, uh, because I was getting into Necromunda for content on the channel, which has been very like widely received positively, um, I just grabbed the Dark Uprising set because I was kind of mathing it all out and I was like, well, I don't like necessarily the Enforcers faction that comes in there, but the set gives me everything I need to start playing. So it has more value for me as a new person than someone who's already in the game, basically, because of the terrain, because of the rule book, because of the templates and the dice, like it has everything. So I jumped in with that and uh, my buddy Ben, uh, who has been on the show a few times with his uh, talking about his daughter's cane and transporting stuff. He is taking care of building the terrain. Uh, he was very anxious to help in that way. And uh, I'm going to be painting it, but uh, I hate building models. I hate building. It's the worst part of the hobby to me. I'd rather paint a thousand things than build a hundred. Um, so he is taking care of all of that. And uh, when that comes back to me, I'll show you what it looks like. And then we'll go through the process of painting it. Anyway, regarding the Corpse Grinder Cult. Uh, I do, the, the models really grew on me. I didn't like them initially, but they have uh, grown on me over time. And so I'm going to, but basically I'm going to build them and then use them as a testing ground for a paint scheme. I want to do like the hardcore, like blend jitsu style where it's a lot like very dark and desaturated. Uh, all the life is kind of taken up. Basically the polar opposite of the Escher gang that I painted where it's very vibrant, bright, highlights, riotous colors. These are going to be very drab, very death-like, kind of uh, pumping up that grim dark style, as it were. And so uh, just kind of expanding my bounds painting-wise, as well as doing something cool that could be used in future content on the channel. Now the last thing I want to show off is just a purchase, because I do count that as progress for myself, and that is just a box of Cotor Gangers. I love the idea of religious zealots. Um, if I had really any interest in playing 40k i would be on the sisters bandwagon right now so hard because they look so stinking cool uh but i just don't uh, right now yet uh, maybe i will in the future but as for right now something smaller uh more i don't know th uh, not thematic that's not the right word because this is very thematic but i mean just smaller in scope and scale uh, i can i can definitely do that so Cotor is kind of like the closest thing to their equivalent there is uh, and I think that's really, really cool. It's a good theme. I played that kind of like religious zealot that focuses on fire uh, in War Machine Hordes with Protector to Menoth. And um, I don't know. I just love it. I think it's a cool, cool direction narratively. Now, as far as my last week's kind of hobby goals, all oh, the last episode, because it was almost two weeks ago, uh, I kind of had to throw that out the window because of the Kappa thing, as I talked about before. But uh, I was going to try and work on Boingrot Bounders and the, the basically the grots that I need for my Warcry Warband. And I got like five models into them and I was just like, I do not have the fortitude to do this right now. I'm kind of burnt out on painting fantasy stuff. The, uh, the Necromunda stuff has been a very refreshing change. Just a break, you know, and I think we all need a break sometimes. So every once in a while I'll pull out like a Age of Sigmar model and I'll paint a little bit of it and I'll be like, no, I kind of want to paint guns and stuff like that. So uh, I'm basically just following where inspiration leads me at this point, which, you know, it's helpful that I want to do Necromunda stuff on the channel and that people are very jazzed about it because it makes me excited to paint them. Uh, but right now, everything for for other stuff is kind of stalled. Uh, I will be doing Warcry stuff here very soon this week, in fact, uh, we're starting our Necromunda campaigns at my local store. This is the one that's going to, it's not going to be uh, filmed. It's going to be totally off air just for me to get comfortable with uh, the game, the Untamed Beasts, getting used to that kind of stuff. So don't, don't look forward to content there, but I will have stuff to talk about and it will help me get set up for my Warcry campaign on the channel, which should be starting. Uh, I want to have it start hopefully in, in like a month. Uh, the reason for that being like that delay uh, being that I think uh, one of the things I really wanted to do for the the campaign was order like nameplates. If you haven't seen these, I'll leave a link down below. But um, it's like a little plate that you can put on the base of your model. And it has a custom font and that kind of stuff. And so I wanted to name each one of them because I am doing um, permadeath in my campaign. And so I'll talk about how that works. So each character is going to be very, very important into how they fit into everything. So I'm very excited about that. Uh, but that just takes, I'm waiting on those to come in and then I can get cranking on that. Uh, cause they, they have to be, their resins have to be painted and everything. So anyway, uh, that is pretty much it for the, this week. Hopefully next week I'll have a lot more to share in terms of 
um, stuff I built and painted, the Necromunda Gang, the uh, Corpse Grinder Colts, is on the desk right now. And so I'll crank those out. Maybe even the Goliath Gang. I have another one as well, kind of in bits and pieces. And beyond that, uh, I'm just cranking through the content saving and um, making sure I have everything backed up and ready for when Kappa strikes and everybody freaks out. It's not that big a deal anymore. They kind of clarified some of the stuff. Uh, so I think it's the threat level has been toned down a whole lot. So anyway, thank you so much for joining me. I hope this was uh, fun for you to watch. Let me know in the comments below if there's anything you'd like to know more about, uh, as well as um, paint schemes and that kind of stuff. I'm happy to oblige. Thank you all so much for watching. Happy Wargaming.